Hi, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White. I recently had a question on the forums at openxmldeveloper.org about how to directly manipulate OpenXML documents. In other words, how can you unzip an OpenXML document, make changes, and then rezip it and end up with a valid document? The question that I had was even more specific, which is, how can you embed a Excel spreadsheet in a PowerPoint presentation, unzip the presentation, unzip the spreadsheet, make a change to the spreadsheet, rezip the spreadsheet, and then rezip the presentation and have the resulting presentation contain all the correct stuff and everything is still valid? Well, I think it's educational just to walk through doing this, walk through the manual process here. It will teach you something about how OpenXML documents are put together. So to get started doing this, let's first create a presentation, and then we'll create a worksheet, and then we'll put a little data in the worksheet, and then we'll drag and drop the worksheet onto the presentation, and then we'll start pulling things apart and putting things back together. So first I want a new PowerPoint presentation. I'll call it test. And I also want a Microsoft Excel worksheet. I'll also call that test. Let's put a little bit of data in there. And I'll save it and close it. Now I'll open this test.pptx, and there's nothing in there. I'll click to add my first slide. I'll delete these placeholders. We don't need those fellows in there. And now I'm going to drag and drop test.xlsx, and I'm going to drop it right on this slide. And there we can see our one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll save this PowerPoint presentation and close it. And now we can get rid of this test.xlsx. It's now embedded in test.pptx. So let's just get rid of that. I'm going to copy and paste test.pptx so that I'm not modifying the original. And I'll change this and I'll change the extension to .zip. It will give me the requisite warning. And now I am going to extract everything to that folder. If I go back up a folder, we see that we have a test-copy.pptx.zip and I now have a folder test-copy.pptx and I'll go into that folder. And if I were to look around in here, I can see underneath the PPT folder, there's this embeddings folder. And if I go in there, sure enough, there is a Microsoft Excel worksheet. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's unzip this guy. So I'll change the name of this, and I'm going to change it to .zip. and I'll extract it. I'm not going to extract it to this exact name because I'm going to want to put my Excel worksheet back in there with this exact name. So I'll extract it to worksheet.zip. So now we have our zip file, which was our Excel worksheet, and we've got this folder, ws.zip. And in here, I'll come in here, I'll go to this worksheet, and I'll modify this sheet1.xml. I'm going to use Visual Studio to modify this sheet1.xml. I'm not using the Visual Studio OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. I'm just using Visual Studio as an XML editor. So if I format the XML, we can see our values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Well, I'll change this upper left value to 100 and I'll save it and close it. Now I want to show you that I can just go into this workbook and look at it using Excel and I can do that after I zip it up but there's one thing I have to do before I can do that. I have to make a small modification to the workbook part itself. You can see this workbook view here has this visibility set to hidden so I'm going to undo that so that the visibility isn't set to hidden and that will enable us to actually open up this workbook and examine it after I rezip it. So now I'll save it and close it. And now I'm ready to rezip my workbook and the directory we want to be at when we rezip this workbook is we want to be in the directory such that this content types.xml will be in the root folder of our zip file. So I'm selecting these four things here and this is where I'm going to send this to a compressed folder. And it's going to ask me for the name here and I'm going to give it a name test.xlsx and it'll give me the warning and I'll say yes. So now we have an Excel workbook that shows us we can see the value of 100 in the upper left corner. So I'll close that and now I'm going to go back and take this test.xlsx and I'm going to put it back at this same folder where the Microsoft Excel Worksheet 1.xlsx was and this is where our ws.zip folder is that we just created and now I'm going to rename test.xlsx. I'm going to rename it to Microsoft under the Excel under worksheet 1.xlsx. I need to rename it as the exact same thing because there's a relationship to this part and the relationship refers to the exact URI of this part. I could change that relationship and then I could change the name of this part, but we don't have to do that. That's not germane to this exercise. And now I can get rid of these other two things. I'm getting rid of the other Microsoft Excel Worksheet 1.xlsx.zip and I'm also going to get rid of our working folder where we unzipped that and went in and modified files. At this point, I could rezip my presentation. I could certainly do that, and if I did that, then it would have the new worksheet in it. But the problem is that in addition to that worksheet, in this media folder, there's this image1.emf file. So what I can do here is if I look in this, I can see it has one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, this is what's going to display by default when the presentation is opened. So if I want to change the appearance here, I would have to go in here and change this to something like 100 and I would have to come up here and I'd have to select this other right here. This isn't really what you'd want to do. I'm doing this as basically a lesson showing how this works. So now I need to do a file and save as. I can't save it as an EMF. That's not a supported saving file type for paint. So I'll save it as image1.bmp and I'll say OK. So now I've got an image1.emf and an image1.bmp. Well let's go in now and change our workbook to refer to the image1.bmp instead of the image1.emf. So I'm going to delete the image1.emf 
and I'm going to need to go into the relationships for slide one, and I need to change the relationship from the EMF to the BMP. So here we can see it refers to image one dot EMF, and this needs to be BMP. And I'll save it. And further, I need to change the content type for this. So here's our content types.xml. So if I go down in this content types.xml, it's going to tell us that if the extension is EMF, then it's, it's got a content type of image slash EMF. What I need to do basically is add another entry here, and what I need to do is call this BMP, and it'll be image slash BMP. Save that and close it. And at this point in time now, I can now create my presentation again. What I've done is I've changed the Excel worksheet. I've changed the image that's going to display by default for that Excel worksheet when we go in. And I have also changed the relationship to that image so that it refers to the BMP instead of the EMF. And I've also added the BMP content type to the content types.xml file. I needed to do all of that in order to create a new valid presentation. So now let's send this to a compressed folder, and I'll call this test2.pbtx. And now I can open test2.pbtx, and sure enough, you can see that BMP that I put in there instead of the EMF, and further, if I double click here, we'll see that we do have that modified worksheet in there that has that changed value up there, that the one has been changed to 100. So there it is. We've taken a presentation that has an embedded workbook in it. We've unzipped the presentation. We found the workbook. We unzipped it. We went into there, we changed some data in that embedded workbook. We could look at that workbook using Excel while we were in there. We could then also change the image that is displayed for that workbook. And then finally, we could rezip the whole presentation and create a new valid presentation that we could go look at in PowerPoint. Of course, you're going to reflect on the fact that it's not trivial to create that image that represents that worksheet and workbook. Well, sooner or later, we'll have some good rendering code that can take an Excel worksheet and workbook and create an image that would be appropriate to embed in this presentation. But for now, what you'll need to do is create an image that might say something like double click on me to update the image to make it contain the correct information. It's a user interface issue. Well, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're always producing. You can also find me on my blog at ericwhite.com. You can follow me on Twitter at ericwhitedev, and you can follow OpenXML on Twitter at openxmldev.